Good evening, everyone. My name is Valerie Pierce, and I am a proud member of the Francis Ellen Watkins Harper Collaborative Club. And we are part of the National Association of Colored Women's Clubs, which is the oldest Black women's club in the country. Tonight, I have two wonderful children's books to share with you. The first one is called, I Love My Family. And it's a wonderful family reunion story. The author is Wade Hudson and the illustrator is Cal Massey. Let's listen to I Love My Family. Every summer, daddy, mommy, my sister Andrea, and I go to Grandpa Lawrence's farm in North Carolina. I'm from North Carolina too. That's the time for our family reunion. All of my father's relatives are there. Cousins James and Hakeem from Philadelphia and Dolores and Lonnie. Aunt Belle is there too. She wears funny hats and tells funny stories that make us laugh. Cousin Johnny claims he played for the Harlem Globetrotters. Of course, we don't believe her. Great Aunt Nell is the oldest relative at the reunion. Daddy says she is almost 100 years old. Everybody loves and respects her. Little Alshon is the youngest. Everybody loves him too. Great Aunt Nell likes to babysit little Alshon. Great Aunt Nell and little Alshon are oldest and youngest family members. A family reunion is a special time. It's a lot of fun too. We go swimming, we play ball, we pick peaches, we sing and we dance. All the wonderful pictures of the activities at the family reunion. At night, we listen to scary stories that Grandpa Lawrence tells. We eat lots and lots of good food. Look at that spread. Every year, we put up a big poster of our family tree. It shows how all of us are related. My name is on there too. On the last day of the reunion, a photographer takes pictures. Grandpa Lawrence and, Gramp and Grandma Bert are there. That's our matriarch and our patriarch, the heads of the family. So are Uncle Tommy, my father's brother, and his family. Uncle David, my father's youngest brother, isn't married. He brings a different girlfriend every reunion. For our picture, 
I stand next to daddy. My sister Andrea stands next to mommy. We have a family picture taken every year. And every year our family gets larger. Wow. What a beautiful picture. When the family reunion is over, everyone is sad. No one wants to say goodbye. I feel sad too. I won't get to see most of my cousins again until next summer. Time to go. But then I remember that Thanksgiving is when my mother's family will have its reunion and I am happy again. Soon it's time to say goodbye. I love my family. I hope you enjoyed that story. Now the next lovely story I have for you is called, Can I Pray With My Eyes Open? I wondered how and when and where was the perfect way to say a prayer. Let's see if we can find out. Must every prayer be one that's spoken? And can I pray with my eyes open? When I go swimming in the creek or play a game of hide and seek. Or even when I climb a tree, if I'm outside, can you hear me? When I'm under the covers, out of sight, or listening to music, or flying a kite. When I don't know what I should do, is that the time to talk to you? If I cross my fingers or stand on my head or get mad and my face turns red. When I rollerblade or ride my bike, can I pray any time I like? If I'm skipping rope or playing ball or walking backward down the hall.
when building castles at the beach. Will you still be within my reach? When I look up and count the stars or climb upon the monkey bars. When I'm in a car, a boat or train, does every prayer have to be the same? I thought it over through and through. Then I shared my thoughts with you. I got an answer right away. There's no wrong time or place to pray. No wrong time or place. The end. She answered her own question. We can pray anytime we need to, whether it's silent, out loud, in front of a crowd, we're just by ourselves. I hope you enjoyed those two wonderful stories. Can I pray with my eyes open? By Susan Taylor Brown. And I love my family by Wade Hudson. Thank you for spending this time with me. And may you and your family have a wonderful holiday season. And may this new year be the best new year for you all. Thank you. Good night. Today, we will be reading The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats, read by Monet Murphy, to Tick, John, and Rosalie. One winter morning, Peter woke up and looked out the window. Snow had fallen during the night. It covered everything as far as he could see. After breakfast, he put on his snowsuit and ran outside. The snow was piled up very high along the streets to make a path for walking. Crunch, crunch, crunch. His feet sank into the snow. He walked with his toes pointing out like this. He walked with his toes pointing in like that. Then he dragged his feet slowly to make new tracks. And he found something sticking out of the snow that made a new track. It was a stick. A stick that was just right for smacking a snow covered tree. Down fell the snow on top of Peter's head. He thought it would be fun to join the big boys in their snowball fight, but he knew he wasn't old enough. Not yet. So he made a smiling snowman and he made angels. He pretended he was a mountain climber. He climbed up a great big tall heaping mountain of snow and slid all the way down. He picked up a handful of snow, and another, and still another. He packed it around and firm, and put the snowball in his pocket for tomorrow. Then he went into his warm house. He told his mother all about his adventures, while she took off his wet socks. And he thought, and thought, 
and thought about them. Before he got into the bed, he looked in his pocket. His pocket was empty. The snowball wasn't there. He felt very sad. While he slept, he dreamed that the sun had melted all the snow away. But when he woke up, his dream was gone. The snow was still everywhere. New snow was falling. After breakfast, he called his friends from across the hall and they went out together in the deep, deep snow.